There you go. How's that? One, two. One, two. We good? Check, 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 check. Yeah, it's good. Check, 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 check. How are you doing, Bryce? Morning. Hey, Chris. This, this one's on? Okay, I'll, I'll probably use this one. Test, test. Tim.
Good morning, and welcome to Indian Creek Church of the Brethren. Whether you're here with, here with us this morning in person or whether you're online, we're glad that you're with us. And if there's anything in your heart that you need some help with, please feel free to reach out to us. This morning's announcements, uh, first off, Donna and her great Christmas sweater and her helper have a, have a few announcements to make. I'm going to call Donna up. Whoa, Bob, you're very tall. There we go. Good morning. Uh, since you all did such a good job with our notes of encouragement to the college uh, young ladies, they were very well received. We are going to do it one more time. I'm asking my friend Jaden, Jaden, you can come on up now, to hand out more note cards. And this time, we're going to do them for the loss and longing moms. The month of December is a difficult month for a lot of them. And so just write some notes of encouragement and they have their meeting a week from Tuesday. So we're also gonna collect some sunshine baskety things on the table back under the coat rack. So if you think of it, next week you can bring some things. You wanna say hi to daddy? Say hi daddy. Hi daddy. Okay, uh, if you wanna bring a few things in for them, that would be great. But in the meantime, please take a few note cards and fill them out sometime during the service, and we will put the basket that Jaden's holding, hold it up, Jaden. We will put that basket back uh, between the offering plates if you would drop the, the note cards off this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Uh, there's a number of things I wanna highlight here from the short people. Um, from our connections. Um, Today is the first Sunday of Advent, and we'll be having the candle lighting this morning in a little bit. Uh, the Women's Fellowship Breakfast is December the 7th in the Fellowship Hall at 8.30, and there is a sign-up sheet in the back so they know how many folks to expect. Um, Klein Meeting House, if you haven't been to the Klein Meeting House Christmas Carol Sing, that's a must-attend event. Uh, we get a lot of folks from outside and from the Peter Becker community come in there and Dennis Moyer has the fire going and it's nice and toasty warm in there, so that's a wonderful event to go to. And uh, that's at 4 p.m. on Sunday, December the 8th, so that would be next Sunday. Uh, great Christmas Eve service coming up uh, at 7 p.m. here at our church, and we're going to have the blessing of the Joint Indian Creek and Monco Choir, so that's wonderful. And they're also going to be a love offering there uh, then that will go towards supporting our youth activities for their summer program. Yeah, well. These fingers used to work. Ah, uh, okay. We don't have anybody's birthday that they want to celebrate, so uh, no birthdays. We have peanut butter and jelly sandwich making at 9 a.m. on Tuesday. And the beanbag program is Thursday at 9 o'clock. And we've also highlighted that. Oh, and don't forget the flowers in the sanctuary. Um, if you would like to provide the flowers in memory of someone, um, this is a busy season for that because a lot of people like to get in for the holidays, but there's a need for that all year round. So if you want to let the office know if you would like to participate in that. Uh, also, I wanted to highlight the men's fellowship breakfast. We kind of had a little miscommunication on my part uh, last go round. So just so everybody understands, the men's fellowship breakfast is always the third Saturday. It starts at eight o'clock and unless notified otherwise, we always go to the Souderton Mennonite home to the Apple Orchard Cafe. And the reason we go there is because um, Chet and Janet live there and it's hard for Chet to get out. So it's nice because Chet can come down there. And if there's any men in the fellowship that uh, you can think of to encourage to come out to that breakfast. I know some of the guys have trouble with uh, transportation and whatnot. Uh, even if you can't provide it, let us know so we can make sure that we, we can make arrangements to get everybody out there that we can. Um, don't forget that we have offering plates in the back if you like to do traditional offering. And of course we have the online offering through the website. And also you can sign up uh, through your finances to have a automatic uh, deposit every month if you would like. And that has some tax advantages. Um, does anybody have any announcements other than what I've mentioned here this morning? 
Okay, uh, this morning, Brother Dave Whetstone is going to deliver the message, and uh, let's join us now as we listen to Sheila play the prelude as we quiet our hearts for this morning's worship. Father God and Lord Jesus, welcome to our gathering. We confess our shortcomings and sinful ways. We beg your forgiveness and ask your guidance that we may walk in the path you have set for us. Make us shining beacons of your teachings that when our days on earth are over, those who knew us will say he was a Christian. Amen. Please join me now in the call to worship taken from Luke. And there were shepherds living out in the fields, nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. We prepare ourselves to receive this great joy on this first day of Advent. This time I'd like to invite Chuck and Debbie to come up and light for the lighting of the Advent candle. My assistant will do the work. Okay. <laughs> He is tall. The first candle on the Advent wreath represents hope. The first Sunday, pardon me, the first Sunday of Advent not only leads us to anticipate the birth of Christ, but celebrate the beginning of a new liturgical season as well. It is purple, the primary color of Advent and a color representing royalty. Sometimes called the prophecy candle, the first candle hearkens us back to Isaiah's foretelling of the birth of Christ and all of the promises God made us in the Old Testament that would be fulfilled by the birth of Jesus. Okay, please join us in song. Stand as you are able, thou didst leave thy throne. <laughs> 
from the Red Hymnal number 292. Morning, everyone. Uh, I noticed Larry's back there this morning. Welcome, Larry. Good to see you. I have a funny story to tell you about Larry. So one of the first times I ever came here, uh, it was a winter day, and I had a heavy overcoat on. And after the service, I went to the back to get my coat, and it wasn't there. Here, Larry, who had a similar jacket to mine, had taken my jacket. Because when I put on his jacket, it just didn't fit quite right, and the gloves were definitely not mine. So I always remember that about Larry. So uh, just a warning, Larry's here, so make sure that you keep your eye on your jacket, because he, he may take your jacket. Sure. Okay. Indian Creek. All right. Welcome. Great to have you here. Oh, this is the last time I was here, we married her off. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so our first hymn this morning is 292, and I was telling other people in the back, I have a thing against foxes, so we're not going to sing verses, yeah. verse 3. So 1, 2, 4, and 5 are 192, uh, 292. Okay, well, I think there's, there's uh, an obvious prayer concern that we want to address right away, and that's welcoming our brother Larry back into our midst. Can we get a standing round of applause to welcome Larry back home? Thank you. 
Now, I'm sure that the fact that it's deer season had nothing to do with Larry getting out of the house for the first time in a long while. <laughs> um, do we have any other updates to the uh, printed prayer request here? Is going on? Myself, obviously, I'm doing okay, so thank you all for your prayers for my, myself. And uh, we're expecting some more tests there and uh, whatever it's going to be. I'm not concerned at all because I got the Brother Creek. Church of the Brethren prayer chain on my side, and Jesus, I'm, I'm good to go. Okay. Father God and Lord Jesus, watch over those who we have mentioned in word and print. Comfort them by your presence and healing powers. Bring comfort to their loved ones and friends. If it be your will, heal them quickly and return them to our fellowship. Amen. This morning's scripture focus is from, taken from Matthew. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had, been, had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child rests. Please stand now as you are able, and we are going to sing We Three Kings from the Red Hymnal number 288. When I sing this, when we sing this song, I always think, oh, I was about eight years old. My mom would always try to get me to sing. So at church, me and a couple of my other buddies of similar age were, had to sing solos for this, for, for this song. So I'm not interested in singing a solo this morning, but uh, we're going to sing verses one, two, three, and five. Four seems a little depressing for me, so we're just going to skip four.
Thank you, Bryce, for your wonderful voice and Sheila for your accompaniment this morning. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Dave, whose message is Christmas means there are no outsiders. Thank you, Robert. Wow. I don't know about you, I can hardly believe that we're here at Christmas already. The year just flew by. Let me just say this, all through the Bible, there are no outsiders. There's no us versus them. And, you know, I, I could be here for a long, long time citing the scriptures that show us that, but you guys would all get hungry and would want lunch. <laughs> so we're just going to pick on a few things, kind of go through the Bible where we see this theme. Let's start with um, Abraham. Abraham and Sarah had no children, and God came to him and said, even though you're old, you are going to have a child. And Abraham believed God, and God gave Abraham a promise. He said, in you, all the nations of the world will be blessed. Now, I have a friend uh, I'm not going to say who it is, but his initials are L B E. And I'm not like Pastor Tim. I don't have a dollar in my pocket, so I'm not going to give that to the first one that guesses who it is. But this friend of mine says, when you see that word all, it's a very tiny word. It's only three letters but it has a big meaning. And you see that word all over and over and over again in the Bible when it refers to the gospel. In you, all the nations of the world will be blessed. I'll give you an illustration of this word all from uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. If you have a pew Bible, you, you should... Get it out. Don't believe me. I might lead you off the edge of the cliff. You got to check it out for yourself. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came into being by Him. There's that Word. And without Him... Here's the definition. There was not anything made that was made. That's a little tiny word that encompasses a big meaning when it encloses everything. In you, Abraham, all the nations of the world will be blessed. Let's go to Jonah. Traveling through, here's another example. God tells Jonah to go preach to the Ninevites. The Ninevites are enemies of Israel. He doesn't want to go. And you know the story, he gets swallowed by a great fish and all that. But he finally preaches to the Ninevites, and they all repent of their sin, and they turn to God. And Jonah's mad. This is why I didn't want to go in the first place. I knew you were a forgiving God. Now I look like a fool. Well, God says to Jonah, don't you think I care about these people, these non-Jews? And what about all the animals? You know, God says he takes care of the sparrows. Don't you think he's going to take care of you too? We have a compassionate God that's concerned about all of his creation. Let's move it forward into the New Testament. Excuse me while I get a drink here. Jesus said, go ye into all the world 
and preach the gospel, but the church was a little bit slow to get a hold of that all concept. So Peter has a vision, and in this vision, there's a sheet coming down from the, the sky, and the sheet has all kinds of critters in it that are considered unclean by Jews, you know, like pigs and pigeons and shellfish and uh, the, an angel says to Peter, kill Peter and eat. He says, I can't do that. I'm a Jew. I've never touched these things before. And the angel says, what God has made clean, do not consider unclean. And he meets with the council of Jerusalem after he preaches the gospel to the Gentiles. And he, he tells them, the Gentiles are turning to our God. And they hold a council, and here's what they say. They said, this is what was written by the prophets, that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all, there's that word again, all the Gentiles who bear my name, says the Lord, who does these things, things known from long ago. It's a theme that's all through the Bible. So here we are on the first day of Advent. What does this all have to do with Christmas? Well, we saw a slide. And I had to memorize this in, in uh, kindergarten when I was a kid. The angel appeared unto them and said, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all, all the people. How about the Magi? What do they teach us about this lesson here? Well, you know, I, I, I've heard theories all my life about what is the star? Was it, was it Halley's Comet? Was it, you know, what was it? It was moving across the sky. It led them. Maybe it was an angel, you know, because stars don't move. Maybe it was an angel that appeared as a star. And I'll let you guys have fun with that. I'm not going to deal with that today. I want to deal with the broad outline of what this message is. Hear these magi there's six or seven Bible translations that translate this astrologers, something that some rabbis today think was forbidden of the Jews. But this is what they did. They, they studied the stars, and they noticed something different. Now, they're from Persia. They don't have the holy scriptures that the Jews have, and yet they're observing nature, and they're being drawn to the Christ child. God is concerned with everybody at this point, not just the ones that have the scriptures, and he'll work with whatever he has to draw them to the Christ. And I, I would venture to say it was the Holy Spirit working through those events that drew them to the Christ child. No scripture just nature. That's all they had. Well, what does Jesus say about the Spirit? He says, the Spirit is in the world to convict men, mankind, of sin and righteousness and judgment. That's the job of the Spirit. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my childhood. I grew up in an independent, we were called ourselves a fundamentalist church. So if you wanted to get right with the Lord and you wanted to get saved, here's Billy Graham right there. And here I am, the lost soul, listening to Billy Graham preach. Wasn't he something? Boy, he was, had a powerful ministry. And he gives his invitation. He says, come to Christ. 
come and have acceptance. And, and the spirit starts tugging on my heart and I come up here and I kneel down with a prayer counselor and I say the sinner's prayer and then boom, I'm saved. I have my ticket to heaven. That's the way we understood it. But the fact of the matter is, even when I hadn't crossed that line, even when I hadn't said the prayer, God was working in my life way ahead of time. And I think if, if you think about your life, you'll see events that have led you to the Lord. The Spirit was drawing these outsiders Jesus said, don't say there's four months and then comes the harvest. Don't say it. Don't say that. He says, look, lift up your eyes. Look on the fields. They're ripe for harvest. Here's, the, here's what's going on. The Spirit has been doing work in people's hearts, and when we share the gospel with them, we should just assume that God has been working in people's hearts. Here's a great book. This is called Eternity in Their Hearts. Anybody ever hear of this? By Richardson. Okay. Let me read you the subtitle of this. I'm going to get another drink again. This guy's involved in missions, and here's, here's the subtitle. Startling evidence of a belief in the one true God in hundreds of cultures throughout the world. So you have a repeating story here where you have some uh, group of people somewhere remote on the earth, and Missionaries come in and they say, you know, we were created by God and God created everything there. And they say, yes, we know that. And do you know, we've all offended God. We've all done things that are wrong. And we deserve to be punished for it. And the people say, yes, we know that. And then the missionaries say, do you know that God has made a way to be reconciled with him? And, there, and you can have peace with God. God's not angry. In fact, it's like the prodigal son that does the wrong thing, and the father runs to embrace him. Did you know that? No, no, we didn't know that. Tell us about that. Because the Holy Spirit has been working in people's hearts the whole time. Don't say there's four months to the harvest. The harvest is now. The Spirit has been working. It's just a privilege for us to be able to share the good news. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all people. Hundreds of people groups. If you can get this book, Eternity in Their Hearts by Richardson, great book. So, that's the end of my talk. Um, I think Bryce is coming forward, and we're going to apply this with the next hymn we're going to sing. We've a story to tell to the nations. Okay, let's stand for this song. Um, Sheila and I were discussing this beforehand, and it has a really nice marchy beat. So if anybody wants to march around the sanctuary as we sing the song, you're perfectly all right. Brian's going to lead the line dance, I think, if, if you want to do that.
Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Always appreciate your input. Always do. Uh, thoughtfulness, depth, strength. Uh, in that book, is there an account from Indonesia of a... I think there might be. Is, is the one where they get up in the morning and they listen to the, for the birds? Sounds familiar. There's a lot of stories in there. Okay. When I was in seminary, I heard that story of a missionary that was in Indonesia, and they were out into the remote areas in the countryside, and they began to live with the people, and every morning the people would get up, and before they did anything, they would go outside and listen. Listen for the birds, and they were look, listening for something very specific. I think it had something to do with their book being lost, Yes, their book being lost, and uh, yeah. and then they would. Then the missionaries came and said, "Well, we have this book. We have this book." And people came to the Lord in, in great numbers. Well, I learned later that that story was from someone I knew, uh, Bidler, Stanley Bidler. Uh, his son Luke Bidler was a missionary in Indonesia. Luke and Dot. She was a gut shell from this area. And that was about them. And I remember how, uh, how touching that was to me, that the Spirit of God was moving before them in that culture, and their traditions paved the way for the gospel to come in profound ways. Uh, I thought it was so interesting. So let's, like you said, Dave, let's never under estimate the power of God's prevenient spirit. That's, that's the, what they use, prevenient meaning God's spirit is moving before us. Before we can even think, before we can imagine, God's spirit is moving. And it's a, a story from that, boy, I almost forgot about that story. And it was so touching when I learned that. Uh, so yeah, that's a book we should all read because I think it builds our faith when we realize that we're not the first one taking that step to share the gospel. We're not the first ones. Uh, it's not all up to us. In fact, very little is up to us. Most of it up is up to the Holy Spirit convicting, like you mentioned. So thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. Shall we receive the benediction? May the God of hope fill you all with joy and peace and believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.